Hello everyone and thank you so much for joining us today for the annual Engineering Education Student of the Year Award 2021. We're here to celebrate the success of students who participated in our EESW sixth form project during the last academic year. Now this award is an annual event which recognises the work of individuals within the EESW teams. I'm delighted that we're going to be joined by three finalists today who made exceptional contributions to the projects that they were involved in. The Sixth Form project has been running since 1989. Much of the work is carried out at school or college with support from teachers and their partner companies. So the project links teams of students from schools and colleges across Wales with companies to tackle a real engineering challenge. It gives students experience in a variety of disciplines within industry and also allows them to develop a range of skills whilst applying their academic knowledge to solve a technical problem. So let's go over to the EESW team to tell us a little bit more about the project. We are the Engineering Education Scheme Wales, also known as EESW STEM Cymru, an educational charity that has been providing STEM programmes in Wales since 1989. Our flagship programme, the EESW Sixth Form Project, aims to address the STEM skills shortage by encouraging pupils to explore the world of STEM and tackle real-world problems in your industry. Around 600 students take part in the project each year, as well as 50 companies across Wales, including those from the aerospace, automotive, mechanical, electrical, medical and energy sectors. So how does it work? Teams of up to eight students in Year 12 are paired with a link company or university. The company sets a brief or problem for the students to work on. The students research the brief and develop a solution, either theoretical or in the form of a model or prototype, as well as produce a technical report. The process lasts around six months, beginning with a welcome event in October where they meet their link engineer from the company and are introduced to the brief. Then engineering workshops in December to help them produce their solution. And finally, the awards and presentation day in spring, where they present their solution to assessors. Pupils may also benefit from an on-site visit to see their brief in context, where possible. The Engineering Education Scheme Wales organises a range of activities to encourage young people from primary school right through to sixth form to take a greater interest in science, technology, engineering and maths and to consider careers related to these subjects. Since 2010, EESW has run the STEM Cymru project across Wales, delivering these exciting activities to more than 7,500 pupils every year and this is the 10th year that the Student of the Year Award has been run. I'd like to introduce Rebecca Davis, EESW CEO, to tell us more about this year's award. Thank you, Lucy. We're grateful to have you with us today to present this award. The academic year 2020-21 was another challenging one for us, and on behalf of us all at ESW, we would like to thank the teachers and company representatives who supported the 47 teams of students involved. Teams managed to stay in touch with their link company and persevered to make the project a success through adopting new ways of working and setting up virtual meeting sessions to discuss their progress. We are grateful to the Welsh Government for continuing to support us with funding through the Education Directorate. We are also pleased with the continued funding we have received from the European Social Fund through the Welsh European Funding Office. Thank you to Lucy and the three finalists for being here with us today and congratulations to you all for your fantastic achievements. I'm sure that you will all go on to have successful careers in the future. I would finally like to thank our sponsor of the ESW Student of the Year Award, Industry Wales. This is the third year that they have supported this event to recognise the importance of our scheme in providing young people with skills to benefit the future economy of Wales. I'll now hand over to James Davis, CEO of Industry Wales, to say a few words. We're delighted to be EESW's uh 
sponsor for the Student Year Award. Industry Wales is a small group of industrialists who've enjoyed a career in engineering, manufacturing or technology. That's taken us all over the world, uh, developing solutions for day-to-day -day problems as well as major interventions are required for the well-being of future generations. Uh, to that end, we're, we're thrilled to see another generation coming forward to enter business and industry to make a difference for everyone. So many congratulations for you all for being selected and the very best wishes for the future. Thank you. Yes, huge thanks again to our sponsors. And I am so pleased to be presenting the award for EESW Student of the Year 2021. It's clear the students are really making brilliant achievements through it. And it is just a fantastic idea. Now, students who participated in EESW last year were asked to submit a proposal about their experience of the project, as well as outlining how STEM and engineering can contribute to the sustainability agenda in Wales. Now, the quality of applications was extremely high. Ten students were interviewed and three finalists selected from the process. Let's hear from some past EESW Student of the Year winners now and runners-up. Hi, my name is Bethan Wilkinson and I was EESW Student of the Year in 2016. Hi, my name is Alex and I led a team in the Engineering Education Scheme Wales. My name is Jai, I went to Gower College and I did my project working in part of steel. Hello, my name is Carl Greenland and I was part of the EESW project back in 2016. Hi everyone, my name is Sarah and I was lucky enough to place uh, in runner-up as the EESW Student of the Year this year and I'm just here today to talk to you about my experience um, within the EESW project. I became involved in EESW because I wanted a better understanding of what engineering involved before I applied to university. I knew I liked maths and physics and I knew I liked solving real life problems but I wasn't quite sure about the reality of engineering. The EESW Sixth Form project definitely delivered on this for me. But ultimately I learned all sorts from the project. I derived some equations, uh, I did some 3D modelling for the first time and uh, I ended up presenting to the Education Scrutiny Committee for my local council. The project I thought was really good as it exposed me to a lot of high level ideas of, such as the CAD and the thermodynamic aspect of our project which then, by the time it came to applying to university, I thought really put me in a good place because by the time I got to interview, it was something that I could really talk to interviewers about and I thought they were really interested by. This project has had a massive influence on my career already. It helped me get into university and I have since gone on to win the Royal Academy of Engineering ELS scholarship, which is a £5,000 award. My interviewers were fascinated to discuss the EESW sixth form project as it demonstrated many of the skills they were looking for and I believe it was vital to my success in that scholarship. The project has hugely benefited my skill set uh, and has largely to build upon my resilience because the solutions might not always work, you might go through solution after solution and it's absolutely great when you do it and you feel such a sense of achievement um, when, you real when you're there on presentation day and you're presenting your team's work and you're showing your solution to your judges, all the nerves kind of go away because you know how much hard work you put into it all. And it absolutely works out in the end when you work together. And I, all I can say is I wish you all the best of luck and I hope you enjoy the project as much as I do. And I would say the project definitely encouraged me to pursue um, a career in science and that's exactly what I've done. So since completing the project, I've completed a BSc in Medical Biosciences from Imperial College London. I'm now also pursuing a Master's in Cancer Biology at Imperial College London. And I would say having the ability to work with um, scientists and engineers definitely sparked my interest in science and gave me a good insight into what the life of a scientist or an engineer is. So I will always be grateful for that experience and the opportunity I had. Finally, to the Engineering Education Scheme Wales, huge thanks from me. The opportunity you provided through the Sixth Form project was uh, probably the best education experience in all my time at school. You gave me a chance to learn things that I couldn't in any normal lesson. So, thank you. It's lovely to hear about the achievements from the past finalists of this award. This year, the judging panel were very impressed by the calibre of the students who applied. And let's not forget the extra challenges they faced because of Covid rules and regulations but they succeeded brilliantly despite this to their absolute credit. 
As the decision was extremely difficult for the judges, two runners-up have been chosen to receive an award of £400 each. The winner will receive a prize of £800 towards the cost of studying a STEM subject at university. So some big prizes up for grabs. And EESW would like to present each student with their award in school in the next few weeks. So without further ado, I'd like to present to you our finalists this year. With us today, we have Avni Patel from Howells College in Cardiff, Katie Noyle from Askol Govingam Raig Plas Maur in Cardiff, and Arwen Skinner from Queen Elizabeth High School in Carmarthen. Huge congratulations to you all for getting to this final stage of the competition. A fantastic achievement, well done. And I'm looking forward to hearing a little bit more about your project. So Avni, let me start with you. Tell me more about your project and the company that you worked with. Yeah, sure. So um, my, the link company for my team and I was a railway company called Transport for Wales. And the specific area that they wanted us to tackle was their maintenance depot in Canton. So the main issue that they were facing was that in their train depot, the technicians could only really rely on word of mouth to know when a train had arrived in the depot. So our mission, let's say, was to um, create an identification and alert system so that um, technicians would know when exactly a train had arrived in the depot so that they could get to work on it. That sounds like a pretty tough challenge to me. How did you find it? Yeah, it was definitely quite tough to begin with. I think since this project was mostly rooted in electrical engineering, it was something that a lot of our group hadn't really tackled with before. But um, it was it was quite a interesting challenge to wrap our heads around. We definitely enjoyed you know, um, it's discovering a part of engineering that we hadn't really learned about before. So I think that was something that we enjoyed. And what was your role in the team? What were you doing as part of this? Yeah, so um, over the nine months of the project, I had the role of project manager. So my position involved um, delegating tasks to members of our team and keeping track of our project's progress and coordinating a line of communication with our industrial partner. Um, and as you all know, the lockdown we went through midway through the project wasn't a great help. So I found that another big responsibility I had was keeping the team motivated and making sure that we continued to make progress on the project. So another um, key part of my job that I decided to do was to establish regular Zoom meetings where we'd review research that we'd done um, that week, have a bit of a discussion about it. And then I delegate tasks to each member for the coming week. Um, and I found these meetings to be quite a good idea for two reasons through lockdown. Um, first being that we remained quite productive in the project and we were able to finish a large um, part of our project report. And we had pretty much the main foundation of our prototype design finalized by then. So it was quite good to keep on track of our work over lockdown. And secondly, I think it was just a nice way to check in with each with each other and um, because pretty much everyone on our team we're quite close friends so I think having those regular meetings was just a nice way to catch up as well um, and I think another big part of being project manager was making sure that yes our prototype was on track to being finished and that we were going to have a complete project report but also that I wasn't being too overbearing or putting too much pressure on my teammates um I mean I'm sure you you all know that you know over lockdown we all had our own difficulties so I think making sure that I kept that in mind and being quite compassionate was quite a big part of my role as well. <laughs> well congratulations Umni. it sounds like you had an amazing experience and did a brilliant job so well done you. Katie if I can come to you tell me a little bit about the project that you worked on and the company that you were involved with. Hello, so our brief was to develop solutions to reduce the carbon footprint of the new BBC Wales building in Cardiff. Um, the multinational engineering firm Arup was our link company and they helped us develop our ideas which included kinetic pavements and solar blinds which would both generate renewable energy to reduce the need of buying electricity from the national grid. We also developed the idea of moss benches which would absorb carbon dioxide from the surrounding areas. So what was your role within the team? Uh, so my role was actually to develop the idea of the moss benches and also to develop the idea of covering the outside walls of the building with moss. The moss would absorb carbon dioxide and other harmful particles from the surrounding area. 
So my role involved calculating how much electricity the BBC building was consuming and how much carbon dioxide was emitted in the process of generating this electricity. I was then able to calculate how much moss the building would need to offset the carbon dioxide emissions and the amount that this would cost. I was also responsible for arranging meetings and ensuring every member of the team completed the task set. That is brilliant. Okay, you need to give me this project and I'm going to hand it over to my bosses, okay? <laughs> so do you feel that you got a lot out of being involved in this? Definitely. Um, taking part in the project had many benefits. It helped me develop uh, my soft skills such as teamwork by working as a group and um, communication and presentation skills whilst presenting my ideas to the rest of the team and also to our link company, Arup. I believe the project was invaluable in providing insight into the engineering industry and an opportunity to develop my skills for my future career as an engineer. Well done. Absolutely amazing ideas. Congratulations, Katie. Um, Anwen, can I chat to you? I want to hear all about your project as well. Tell me about the project that you were involved in and the company that you worked with? Um, so my team worked with um, Aberystwyth University um, on freestanding tennis ball towers. Um, so it's a lot more theoretical than practical for us. Um, so this was developed off an idea created by Andrew Vega, who is a physicist. And um, you can stack tennis ball towers um, without actually leaning them on each other. And so our job was to try and think of ways that we could use this in a practical sense, not just a theoretical sense. Um, so it was quite difficult at the start to think, how do tennis ball towers relate to buildings and different things? Um, so we started by looking into it and seeing how um, these tennis balls interacted with each other, how it could be used in industries such as packing problems. So how many spheres can you fit in a box, that kind of thing. And we eventually landed on underwater living um, based on the ideas of Jack Cousteau, so how um, we could live underground because the most effective shape to live underwater is in spheres like tennis balls and how we could theoretically create underwater skyscrapers for future living. Okay, Aaron, you're just blowing my mind here. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. So tell me, what was your favourite bit that you, you actually kind of did as part of the project? Oh, um, I actually really enjoyed looking into all the different ways to live underwater and we actually reached out to the, uh, Andrew Vega, who's the uh, professor who theorised this and how we could, act, how much was involved in spheres being underwater. Um, we looked at bubbles, which you wouldn't think would be uh, related, but the way that they react to the conditions underwater, like pressure, salinity, all that kind of thing, um, which was really nerdy but really fun <laughs> <laughs> doesn't sound nerdy to me at all it sounds absolutely <laughs> fascinating so would you do it would you want to live underwater oh 100 percent. um i want to go into oceanography so it was the perfect way for the project to go oh, amazing well if that's what you want to do i have absolutely no doubt that you will do it incredible what do you feel that you got out of being involved in a project like this um i think it was mainly the scientific research skills because it was in mainstream education you don't really look into these big wide projects um in the sort of subjects that you do so to have to do this what 60 page paper with referencing and scientific method was quite a feat on all the group um and the way that we could work together was actually really good on how to see how we'd work in the workplace in the future and do different things that we wouldn't normally do. Like, I know one of my friends in the project had to learn how to code from scratch, which is amazing. Finally, I just have to ask you all one question. How would you feel if you were our overall winner? Avni, let me come to you first of all. Um, so for me, I think if I were to win the award, it would really, really mean a lot to me. Um, to be honest, when I first thought about applying for this award, I felt a bit out of my depth. <laughs> um, after seeing who the past winners were, I did feel a bit intimidated. But 
I, I was like, you know what, I'm just going to do it anyway. I'm going to go for it. And um, coming this far and being selected as one of the finalists is something that I'm really grateful for. And I mean, after hearing from Katie and Arwen, like I can see how amazing their products were and the standards clearly really high this year. So I'm really lucky to have gotten as far as a finalist. Um, and for me, I think engineering is a career that I've just completely fell in love with and I think as soon as I realized that it was a career for me I went a bit nuts like trying to find as many courses I could about it and trying to learn as much as I could sounds very nerdy but what can I say I'm proudly nerd but um, I think the thing I love the most about engineering is that the more I learned about it the more I found that there was to discover and for me that's just why I love the I just love engineering and science so much and I think getting this award would be a really incredible recognition from an organization like STEM Cymru whose projects have done so much for aspiring engineers like me and allowing us to get an experience into our future careers that I know a lot of other students don't get to have for different fields so I'm really grateful to have been selected as a finalist and winning this award would be really great and it would mean a lot to me. <laughs> Well, Avni, we are so pleased that you did enter and you're an amazing finalist. Best of luck. Katie, let me come to you. What would it mean to you to be our overall winner? Winning the ESW Student of the Year Award would be a fantastic achievement and a real honour. Engineering is something I have been interested in for several years and taking part in the project has exposed me to different elements of engineering and developing novel and creative solutions to global challenges such as the Earth's carbon footprint. Taking part in the project confirmed my ambitions to study engineering at university. So winning this award will, will set my future study in engineering off to a good start. And yeah, I'm really grateful to be part of the final. And it's really interesting hearing about um, everyone else's project. So yeah, I'm really grateful to get this far, far. so thank you. Well, you're a fantastic finalist and whether you win or not, I have no doubt that you will absolutely fly in your chosen career. Um, Adwen, let me come to you. Finally, what would it mean to you? Um, I think it would be a vote of confidence kind of thing that we can actually do this and we can go into whatever we want to do. And we have these people, this award basically to go, you can do it because you got this far. There is no doubt that you three can absolutely do anything that you want to do. Look, best of luck to all of you. You're all absolutely amazing and a total inspiration. Congratulations, well done. So I think we can all agree that all the finalists are worthy of winning this award and have very bright futures ahead of them. But it is time now to announce our Student of the Year. So in no particular order, the first runner up is Arwen Skinner from Queen Elizabeth High School who worked with Aberystwyth University. Congratulations to you. Our second runner up is Avni Patel from Howells College who worked with Transport for Wales Rail Services. Congratulations to you too. So that means our winner of the EESW Student of the Year Award is Katie Noyle from Uskol Govingham Raig Plasmaur who worked with Arab. Huge congratulations to you, Katie. You've won £800 towards your studies next year. And I know your project was about the BBC building. So as somebody who works there, thank you very much and well done. You should definitely pop in and see us all sometime. And I also have a few words here from your teacher, Mr Gareth Williams, who said, The 2020-21 EESW engineering scheme was incredibly challenging due to the circumstances restricting any hands-on experiences and visits. Katie's motivation and commitment never waned despite these obstacles and her work ethic was second to none. From the start, Katie had clear objectives and a focus on the end product, a concise yet comprehensive cost-benefit analysis of different methods to reduce the carbon footprint of the new BBC building in Cardiff. Her interest in engineering and sustainability can be clearly seen in different areas of her application. She's not only a model pupil, but a modern one as well, reflecting all that's required of the workforce and leaders of the future. So a real accolade from your teacher there, Katie. Huge congratulations. I'm sure we're going to be seeing 
great things from you in the years ahead and you deserve to be very proud of yourself. Well, that's all from me today. Thank you so much to everybody for joining us. We hope you enjoyed hearing from this year's winners. Congratulations to, to everybody who took part. And we hope that the EESW projects that are currently underway for 2021-22 will be just as successful. Good luck and bye-bye.